Energy carried by electromagnetic waves. The rate of energy transfer by an electromagnetic wave is described by the pointing vector. Pointing vector, uh, as we have seen, the direction of propagation was E cross B. The pointing vector is 1 over mu0 permeability of free space times E cross B. It has a unit watts per meter square. So that basically describes power uh, carried per unit area. It's unit perpendicular area. So the direction of uh, the pointing vector E cross B is the wave propagation direction. Now, let's see that we have this uh, dimensional relationship for the pointing vector. Now, a pointing vector is E cross B over mu0. So, dimension-wise, it would be the dimension of E B over mu0. And at the same time, we have E is equal to B times C, as we have found out using uh, Maxwell's equations. So, the dimension of S is therefore, if we substitute B C for E, B squared C over mu zero dimension. Now, we remember that the energy density, energy per volume stored in the magnetic field is B squared over 2 mu zero. So, we can see that the dimension of this energy density would be force multiplied by distance ma, ml over t squared times l, work or energy divided by volume l cube. And dimension of C is L divided by T. It's a speed. So dimension of S would be for B squared over mu zero, I substitute ML uh, over T squared L over L cube. Uh, and for C, I substitute L over T. So we obtain ML squared over T squared L cube multiplied by L over T. So, ml squared over uh, t cube multiplied by 1 over l squared. So, this is basically ml squared over uh, t squared was energy. So, energy divided by time gives us power. So, this is dimension of power divided by 1 over area. Therefore, we see that indeed dimensionally, this is power per area, which is measured in watts per meter squared. <coughs> Now, for a plain electromagnetic wave, the magnitude of E cross B was E times uh, B because E and B are uh, perpendicular to each other. So, we would see that this power per area would be 1 over mu 0 E times B, where E is equal to B times C. So, we can substitute that here. Uh, for B, we substitute E over C, then this becomes E squared over mu 0 C. Or for E, we substitute B, C, then it becomes B squared C over uh, mu zero. Okay, so that would be instantaneous power per perpendicular area. Now, this is a sinusoidal wave. So what we really care about is the time average of S over one cycle, which is called the intensity. That's the average power per perpendicular area is intensity. Okay, <clears throat> so what is the intensity here? average power per perpendicular area, that's average value of the pointing vector uh, magnitude. And we have the electric field uh, for the plane wave E max cosine kx minus omega t. So for the average value of s, we need to find the average value of uh, E max square cosine square kx minus omega t over mu zero c. So we're looking for the average value of cosine square really. So average value of E square is E max squared 1 over the period that's an integral over one cycle cosine square kx minus omega t dt. So this would be 1 over the period. Uh, cosine 2 kx minus 2 omega t plus 1 over 2. Why? Because cosine 2 theta is 2 cosine square theta minus 1. So for uh, cosine square theta, we can substitute cosine 2 theta plus 1 over 2, which is what we did here. Cosine 2 theta, theta is kx minus omega t plus 1 over 2 dt. Now what is this integral? <clears throat> the integral of cosine 
will give us a minus 1 over 2 omega uh, sine 2 kx minus 2 omega t which will be evaluated between 0 and t the period and then we have one half dt which gives us from 0 to t t over 2 by multiplied by 1 over t so this term sine 2 kx minus 2 omega t uh, evaluated at one period minus evaluated at time t equals to 0 <clears throat> this is basically uh, because 2 omega t is 2 times 2 pi over the period times the period which is 4 pi sine 2 kx minus 4 pi which is sine 2 kx because sine is periodic with 2 pi uh, we have this portion equals to 0 and we're left with 1 over 2 so average value of e square uh, gives us basically uh, because we also had an e max squared here uh, this multiplied by e max uh, squared so average value is basically e max squared over 2 all right so when we substitute that into here so average value of e squared is e max e max squared over 2 e max squared over 2 mu 0 c or e, e is equal to b c so it's going to be b max squared <coughs> c over 2 mu 0 uh, so we obtain because the c's one of the c's will cancel here this would give us b max square c square but uh, this would cancel one of the c's here so we're left with c b max squared over 2 mu 0 if we write it in terms of magnetic field or e max times uh, b max c which is going to give us e max b max over 2 mu 0 so these are all describing the same thing average power per unit area perpendicular area which is intensity that's the average uh, value of the pointing vector uh, magnitude now if we recall the energy density in an electric field we have one half epsilon 0 e square in a magnetic field we have one half two mu zero b square now for this plain electromagnetic wave we have found that b is equal to e over c so if we substitute that here this would become e squared over c squared over two mu zero e squared over two mu zero one over c squared is mu zero epsilon zero mu zeros would cancel and we would find one over two epsilon zero e squared which is precisely also the energy carried in the electric field component so so we find that in a given volume the energy is shared equally by electric and magnetic fields 1 half epsilon 0 e square equals b squared over 2 mu 0 which is dictated by the relationship between e and b e is equal to b c all right so the total instantaneous energy density now would be uh, twice of this so we have electric field part magnetic field part uh, epsilon 0 e squared or b squared over mu 0 would be the total energy now if we take the average total energy uh, that is carried uh, so that's the time average we obtain epsilon 0 average value of e squared once once again this is e max squared over 2 so we will obtain one half epsilon 0 e max squared or b max squared over 2 b max squared over 2 mu 0 okay so comparing this with the uh, intensity the power average power per unit area e max squared over 2 mu 0 c was our average power per unit area now we have uh, one half epsilon 0 e max squared or b max squared over 2 mu 0 so b max squared over 2 mu 0 is our uh, uh, total energy average value so if you multiply it by c we obtain basically the intensity so uh, we see that the relationship between intensity and the uh, uh, total uh, average energy carried per unit volume is that we have to multiply this average total energy per volume with the speed of light to obtain the intensity of the wave so intensity of an electromagnetic wave is speed of light times the average total energy density now let's look at an example 
Estimate the maximum magnitudes of the electric and magnetic fields of the light that is incident on this page because of the visible light coming from your desk lamp. Treat the light bulb as a point source of electromagnetic radiation that is 5% efficient at transforming energy coming in by electrical transmission to energy leaving by light. Okay, <clears throat> so if we have a point source, uh, remember for a point source, the wave front is a spherical surface. So the intensity uh, of the wave would be equal to the average power per perpendicular area, which is the surface area of the sphere 4 pi r square. And this is speed of light times average value of total energy per carried per volume, which is equal to average value of the pointing vector magnitude. And this is uh, E max squared, uh, our total energy density, which is E max uh, squared over uh, 2 epsilon 0 C. So uh, our total energy was 1 half epsilon 0 E max squared. We multiplied by C. So we obtained 1 half epsilon 0 E max squared C. And C, remember, is 1 over square root mu zero epsilon zero. So what is our intensity S? It is uh, once again the same thing I have written up here E max squared epsilon zero. Let's write it as C squared divided by 2C. The same equation multiply top and bottom with the speed of light. And for C square, I will substitute 1 over mu 0 epsilon 0. So this will be E max squared over 2C uh, epsilon 0 divided by uh, mu 0 epsilon 0. The epsilon zeros will uh, cancel and I will find E max squared over 2 mu 0 C for the a pointing vector. Okay, so it's E max squared over 2 mu 0 C. This is once again intensity, average power per perpendicular area, which is 4 pi r squared. So we can find the maximum electric field magnitude as uh, mu zero c average power divided by 2 pi r squared square root from this equation you can see that the 2 will make this for 2 and then we have e max squared equals mu zero c average p divided by 2 pi r squared now we have a 60 watts lamp uh, which is with 5% efficiency. So we can only convert uh, 60 watts of electrical power to 3 watts of light. Uh, and what is the distance between your desk lamp and the page on the table? It's roughly, let's say, 30 centimeters, 0 0.3 meters. So we can estimate this to be uh, by substituting the numbers uh, 4 pi 10 to minus 7 Henry per meter permeability of free space 3 times 10 to 8 meters per second speed of light 3 watts is the average power 2 pi 0 0.3 meters squared square root and this gives us roughly 45 volts per meter maximum electric field magnitude and the relationship between E and B remember is uh, E is equal to BC so we have B max is equal to E max divided by C E max divided by C so this would be 
45 divided by uh, 3 times 10 to 8. So we will find the maximum magnetic field hitting the page to be 0 0.15 micro Tesla. All right. Okay, so in summary, <clears throat> we're talking about energy carried by electromagnetic waves that is described by the pointing vector S. Pointing vector S is defined as 1 over mu0 e cross b. It's pointing in the direction of wave propagation. It has a unit watts per meter square. It describes power per unit perpendicular area. <clears throat> And by doing dimensional analysis, we have verified that it is power per area. And for a plane electromagnetic wave, E cross B is EB, uh, and E is equal to BC. So we see that the instantaneous power per area is instantaneous value of S, the magnitude of the pointing vector, 1 over mu0 E squared over C, or B squared C over mu0. Now, what we have to do to calculate intensity is to find the average, time average value of the power per unit area. So we need time average value of E squared. We have shown that using our solution to Maxwell's equation, uh, the traveling wave solution, E max cosine kx minus omega t has a time average value. E squared has a time average value over one cycle, one half E max squared. So when we substitute that for the time average of this, we obtain uh, E max squared over 2 mu zero C. Or E max is B max times C, C B max squared over 2 mu zero or E max B max over 2 mu zero for our intensity. And remembering our energy density, this energy stored uh, per volume in the electric field and magnetic field components, we have shown that UE is equal to UB in this uh, uh, plane electromagnetic wave. So in a given volume, the energy is shared equally by E and B fields. Uh, the total instantaneous energy density would be then uh, epsilon zero E squared or B squared over uh, mu zero. And if we take the time average over one cycle for the total energy density, we obtain one half epsilon zero E max squared or B max squared over two mu zero. And this multiplied by C gives us the intensity. Uh, remember intensity is uh, a max squared over 2 mu zero c or c b max squared over 2 mu zero so b max squared over uh, mu zero is our total energy it's a um, uh, average value is b max squared over 2 mu zero so multiplying this by c we obtain uh, i the intensity so it is uh, the intensity of an electromagnetic wave is speed of light times the average total energy density. Then we looked at an example. We have uh, estimated the maximum magnitudes of electric and magnetic fields of light hitting a page uh, from uh, uh, treating our uh, desktop lamp as a point source of a uh, light uh, with 5% efficiency in transforming electrical energy to uh, optics, optical energy. Uh, so for a point source, because a point source has a spherical uh, wave front, we have average power divided by 4 pi r squared, the perpendicular area is intensity, which is c times u total, which is average uh, pointing vector magnitude, e max squared over 2 epsilon 0 c. Uh, and equating this to average power uh, divided by uh, 4 pi r squared, and uh, going from epsilon 0 to mu 0 by multiplying top and bottom with c, we can see that this is square root of mu 0 c average power divided by 2 pi r square for the maximum electric field uh, component. A 60 watt lamp with 5% efficiency will produce 3 watts of light. The estimated distance between the uh, desktop lamp and the surface of the table is 0 0.3 meters. With that, we obtain an estimation of 45 volts per meter. Once we know E max, B max is E max divided by the speed of light. So it is uh, divided by uh, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. And this gives us 0 0.15 micro Tesla.